Oshkosh, day three, here with Tom Schnell, MI2, Hoplite, yes, behind me. So Tom, you're working in degraded visual conditions and trying to make pilots' lives safer and better by using engineering. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, you know the phrase, own the night. Uh, we want to help aviators own the brownout, own the whiteout, own the degraded visual environment so you can operate at a normal operational tempo, even in degraded visual environments. And we're doing that by restoring visual dominance. So when you fly in the day, VMC, visual meteorological conditions, you're seeing the horizon, you're seeing texture from farm fields and the pavement and so on underneath of you. What makes flying in the great visual environments hard is all that information goes away and it causes you to lose proper orientation relative to the terrain, which could then lead to problems by colliding with it. And so we reinsert some of that visual information that gets lost in the great visual environments through helmet mounted displays. We put in symbologies, textures, and other ameliorations that help you restore visual dominance. One of the coolest things along those lines is color night vision. Turns out stuff still has the same color at night. Just because it's dark doesn't mean it changed color. There are now cameras available that you can put on an aircraft with uh, which you can see in almost total darkness. You need a little bit of light, uh, like a sliver of moon or, or you know stars and you can get 60 frames of color imagery that looks actually more or less like daytime. Helps you identify uh, people, objects, and so on, and it sure makes a big difference in situational awareness uh, flying uh, in, in such conditions. We also use LIDAR, so light scanning ranging systems that measure uh, how far away objects are, and they actually get mapped and then identified and the simplified version of that gets put into the helmet so that I might get a symbol of a tower when there's a tower or a power line or a terrain that you might collide with trees even and so on. So we, we use sensors, displays and other technology to help the pilot navigate much more efficiently and for sure also safer in degraded visual environments with helicopters. So you work with University of Iowa, and you're a professor there. I also understand you work with some really good friends of ours, which is the FAA Technical Center out of Atlantic City. So what kind of uh, projects are you working with them on? Is, this is one of them, it sounds like. One of them. Yeah, so primarily what, what we're, we've identified that peripheral vision mm -hmm. is very important for orientation. You know, like, like when you pick up a helicopter from the ground, you got two problems. Number one, you want to know how high you are and then of course you're going to start drifting around, which in and of itself is not a problem until you catch a wheel and roll the helicopter over. So we're now introducing textures in the uh, peripher periphery of, of a helmet mounted display, which is very unique. Uh, in fact, the FAA Tech Center provided it to us and it goes out to 140 degrees field of view. So out there you don't see detail because the retinal makeup or the physiology of the human eye doesn't allow you to see detail but you see motion really well and we're har harnessing the ability to detect motion out in the periphery and then we go and uh, remove visual cues from pilots like much how you do in instrument flying we use uh, covers over the, the, the goggles and so you can't see the real world and then we measure with and without the symbology added, you know, how well you can hover, how well you can judge height and things of that sort. So if anyone was interested in what you were doing and maybe even a student is looking at doing something in this space, where would they find you and this program or the um, projects you're working on online? So if you go to Google and you Google Operator Performance Laboratory, you should find it. It's at the University of Iowa and we got a really neat website you can go on that website and there's actually a 3D view of my lab and you can kind of kind of walk around inside the lab. You can even jump in some of the cockpits and look at the gauges and all that. This helicopter is probably in there as well. Like you said, we do love working with uh, bright minds that come into uh, engineering and even on the undergraduate level, like the senior year, many of them actually kind of carry on to get into their master's degree. So I, I work with talent uh, along those lines. We 
also have a, a really good relationship with the uh, United States Air Force Test Pilot School, uh, whose graduates sometimes come to the University of Iowa and they can do a PhD degree uh, under my advisorship in my lab and they actually get to fly our equipment and, and uh, learn about agile flight test for Department of Defense projects, many of which uh, we're doing at my lab. Well, it sounds like I'm going to have to come to Iowa and make a visit. So, um, Tom, we greatly appreciate your time. You You're doing some fantastic work out there, making life better, life safer for pilots working in extremely harsh and challenging conditions. Uh, you know, you're doing God's work out there for the helicopter driver. I greatly appreciate it as a helicopter pilot myself. So if you're interested, go to the website. Um, if you're a student looking for a challenge that's um, a wonderful challenge, give them a call. For Aero News Network at Oshkosh 2023, I'm Rex Alexander. Go Hawks.